really hard to not look <laughs> So this is Ross. He's my oldest friend I've ever had. He just got out of the Air Force, and what did you get? I bought a box of problems. From Red Komodo. I yes. can remember the longest way back when we were first getting into film production and video stuff. Before YouTube, we used to do business videos together. We didn't make any money though. It was fun. It was fun. We had lots of cameras <laughs> and we were really into The Hobbit because they were using Red Digital and it was always like a dream of mine that one day we'd be able to play around with the Red. The day is here. Very expensive sticker. Free camera. Wow, that was fast. Dang. Sorry, y'all. It came out quick. Hit it up. Look, they gave us some extra parts, too. So the Komodo itself <laughs> is pretty small. Very small. It's just like a little brain. And then we've got a 18 to 35 millimeter Sigma lens. That's mine, which I contributed. Thanks. So I can say, <laughs> this is partially... It's our baby. It's our baby put together. But what is this display? I don't remember what it's called. This is a small HD. It's a 7-inch... Um, display line, it's the Cine 7, so it's the top mm. one. It's all touch screen. There's only one button on it, which is power. Wow. power How bright does it get? Because when we were just playing around with it, this got so hot. I think it's 2,000. <laughs> 2,000 nits? Uh, it's... That's meant for... You can probably see it in daylight just fine. It might have some glare. Tell me about the accessories you've got. There's all these millions of parts you yeah. had to buy to put this together. There's no, like, roadmap either. It's like, mm -hmm. you buy the box, it's like, that's nice. It won't work <laughs> at all. They give you an AC power adapter and, like, the comes with the cannon mount. And, what does uh, the red itself, the Komodo, actually come with? You get the, uh, the mount or whatever. This okay. one is actually an extra one. It has the... Uh, UV filter and the polarizers. So it's the so red attachment. What's its built-in attachment called? The RF. The RF. It's the Canon mount. Okay. The autofocus doesn't work with that oh. because red didn't feel like making it work. But if you plug the adapter in, the autofocus works. I will never use. So <laughs> you don't want I autofocus don't on a camera like this. And it does have a display, which I'll give them credit for. Very wee. Do you know the resolution of that display? 1440 by 1440. Whoa. So it's a square. And it's tiny. Like you can... Yeah, it's like three inches. <laughs> so that's my Apple Watch. And that's the display that's built into the brain. And it's still like a 2K resolution, despite being super... Yeah. Like I... Normally, if I'm pixel peeping on something, even like a 5K iMac or my iPhone, I can, I can really see the pixels if I look close. This one, no matter how close I look... It's like I could not see. You need a magnifying attachment or accessory to ultra, <laughs> see all of it. Yeah, ultra super retina. And then this cage just doesn't come with it either, right? No, that, yeah, it's all an arm and a leg, but um, <laughs> this is from a company over in Australia called uh, Ignite Digi. They make cables and like cage attachments and stuff, and they're all about making um, parts for like the Ronin and Moby mm. gimbals. This is like a specific thing for the Komodo from them. And oh, it's custom just for this it's, type of camera? It'll only work with the Komodo because the mounting points are sized in there for just the, I see. the Komodo. What are these big rails for? So this <laughs> is for accessories and whatnot. The uh, I don't have the lens on there that I've bought. I'm, I'm still waiting on the adapter. For this the is end. not the final form. It, it'll be like out to... <laughs> the lens is going to go out to, to here. Where the, end, where the rails stop, that's where the lens will stop. Oh my gosh. That's going to be heavy. What about this grip you're using? So this, this is guy cool. is a small rig. That's what the, oh. uh, the rail brand is as well. Oh, these are the same company? Yes. Yeah, it's uh, it's made rig. of wood. Yeah, it's real wood. That's cool. Mounts onto the uh, cage or whatever that I got with the Ari rosette. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like a tripod. It ain't moving. Like, I haven't <laughs> felt, it, felt it budge at all. I mean, this thing is already like eight pounds. Wow. And then you have more rails on the back. Yes. Is that actual carbon fiber? Yeah, these are carbon. Oh, wow. They're just tubes. That's official. And that's holding this battery sideways. I've never seen someone yeah, attach yeah. it like that. It wouldn't fit on the bottom the way I had it because um, uh, I couldn't flip it over. So if I wanted to set it down, it wouldn't have been flat. It would always like tilt it forward. I see. So for like guerrilla filmmaking like us, because we are not... We're broke. Hollywood. <laughs> we're broke now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. We're not Hollywood uh, creators. We're just kind of messing around with cameras for... We'll, we'll figure it out. YouTube for something we want to slap on a tripod real quick and take off and move around. We're filming a lot of the iPad Pro review before we had a cable to attach <laughs> this monitor to the red. So we were just using the tiny display and it was a lot harder to tell when things were in focus. Yeah, it looks great! You put it on the iMac and it's, it's all out of focus. <laughs> you realize what's in and out of focus once you can actually see it. But this is a lot better. You can actually yeah, you can, uh, view the display. See all the detail. What inspired you to go with a red over something like a Blackmagic 
or a uh, Canon or a Sony. I know you can beat that uh, autofocus and all that. And I we're doing uh, DSLRs and whatnot, so I was already used to doing manual focus for everything. And mm -hmm. so I figured, why get used to autofocus just to have it stripped away from you when you like actually need it? I'm so I'm tired of my phone. I have Drew's old iPhone Seven. That's Plus the here. iPhone Seven from <laughs> the attic days. <laughs> it's had some uh, some use. Same battery. Yeah, same battery, Poor but he re is, uh, replaced the glass a couple times. Yeah. Biggest factor why I went with the red is I wanted the R3D codec, and you get the uh, the color science, and you can change things after the fact. It's going to take me probably years to figure out all the ins and outs of using the actual codec for the color grading and whatnot. It'll be all potato, but I'll, I'll figure it out. We get to play around with this for some B-roll, and I must say the most amazing part of the red codec, because I've never edited with red footage before, is the variable... ISO. You can just go into settings and say, I want this to be 50 ISO or I want this to be 60,000 after you've already recorded. That was pretty trippy. Yeah. When we put when we played it on the computer, it was like, <laughs> oh, that's a little ex that's a little too overexposed. Just turn it down. It looks fine. Good to go. It's a lot of data. Takes all takes... your uh, all the processing of it, and you don't have to think about all that before. It's good to have a, a knowledge of it, but mm -hmm. you're not limited on the decisions based on where you're at. Like if you need to change it later, you can. Mm -hmm. and it's not all baked in like a typical camera would be. And what's the max resolution this records at again? So this guy's at um, 6K at um, 17 by 9. I don't remember the exact pixel dimensions on there. What's the max frame rate at 6K? 40 FPS. Wow. So you could slow it down. Makes them really a little bit slower than half speed, not and it would still be so it's probably at like, 24. Yeah, the uh, the power button is it's not a button, it's a switch. Thank goodness, we need more switches. Shloop. And this uses SDI on the top. Yes. So the wow. the Komodo itself doesn't have an output for a HDMI or like a mini HDMI. It's just a little coaxial looking thing in the back. Plug your SDI in there, and it it, it looks like what you get your uh, modem power or data oh, through yeah. your Wi-Fi. It's like a coax looking cable. There's the display. Yeah, it's really bright. You can tell that's super vibrant even Ooh. inside. I'm impressed from the initial footage we recorded because it's not a resolution thing. It's I no, think no. a lot of people misunderstand that. Whenever they see red camera, they just think, oh, are you recording at 6K now? Are you recording at 8K? No, it's it's the color science of the R3D science format. Rules. It's it's It rules because it's like balanced. Even in bright environments, it doesn't get as overexposed as much. And it has that cinema feel. Yeah, has they, uh, the skin tones are a big thing on there. Cause right. If, if you look at other footage and it looks pale in comparison, not to make a pun out of that, but it like it <laughs> literally it looks pale. You throw this thing on there and it, it feels like all the colors are like actually what you see is what you get. It's very accurate and I'm just impressed and amazed that Red actually got their prices low enough. Yeah, it's like, that'll be 12, just kidding, 6 <laughs> <laughs> It used to be like the price of a car. Now it's the price of a used car. Mm. So progress is being made, but... I don't know how much more you'd want it to be beat down, because then they start stripping things out that you're like, wait, I need that. The one thing that surprised me is that, you know, this is the most expensive camera I've ever touched, and there's still only one CFast card <laughs> slot. Don't mess up. Yeah, don't mess up. The... Black Magic we're using to record this has two, so you can switch to recording to another one if it fills up. But they put your money in other things instead of giant preview monitors or grips or anything. It goes all into the sensor quality and the onboard chip. Doesn't Red have like a patent on uh, video codecs and whatnot, and uh, like processing of lossless footage? Anytime somebody tries to come out with that, yeah, I'm contributing to the problem. They call it a problem. <laughs> I call it. Yeah, it's nice. It's a solution for me. They, now I'm one of the suckers who bought <laughs> one of their rigs. <laughs> They've patented basically lossless video. Yeah, in like a way, it's very like not transparent in how they what they patented. It's like, well, what exactly is it? It's like, well. It's just raw, unrestricted data. Wow. <laughs> and other companies, they have to do all these codecs and whatnot to have their footage. Most cameras you'll have are like H.264. Mm -hmm. ProRes? Yeah, the, uh, Apple's ProRes. That's on right. most. That's the go-to because it's easy to edit that. You don't have to yeah. like, use proxies or whatnot. But there's the advantage. The whole One of the reasons for buying the RED is the R3 codec, which is that gets into that patent thing too. And you can't get that on any other camera? Uh, as of right now, no. They wow. might. They might try and change that later. It would be sweet to be able to have that in like GoPros and whatnot. Like, oh, it would yeah. just be really tiny, but you have these yeah. massive files. Of it. That's actual raw. It's not fake yeah. raw. Some uh, some cameras, they claim that they have raw, mm -hmm. but like it's sort of not because they, they bake stuff in. It's like, oh, it's raw footage, but like if you can't change the ISO, like how raw is it? It's, it's not collecting every piece of detail. Yeah. It's still 
limiting the the way the way these guys like raw what raw is like so you have your color channels your rgb like Mm -hmm. the information for those is each individually recorded but there's no like bias towards any the camera's not putting any more information saying like oh it wants to be this when you like it'll skew it from what you actually get what this does is what goes in is what you get out it's not like baking anything into that data so what are you gonna do with it we'll we'll sell it (laughs) he's gonna flip it i want to try and do like business stuff with it or like commercials or something or Mm -hmm. make spots or Really, any way to sell the images that come out of this thing? Freelance. Yeah. Except not free. Free. He'll call it paid lance. Well, thanks for letting us play around with it and see it in the flesh. Uh, I'm a bit loose back here. I gotta tighten down the screws. Yeah. <laughs> not seen someone do the V mount sideways. Yeah. Some of the mounts they it's have. It's more balanced that way. I yeah, guess. you don't have to worry about hitting your hand or whatever. Because right. the way I had it on the bottom before, and it would stick up, and it mm-hmm. was. Like, I guess now it's it's out of the way. Sweet. I thought it'd be kind of weird, like with the balance, but it seems to work. Right. Works well. Enjoy some red footage now.